Hey everyone, welcome to your UNC Biology Lab. We really hope that you enjoy your time with us with whatever types of experiments are planned for the semester, but let's first spend some time reviewing 10 key concepts regarding lab safety. Number one, follow all established procedures. Not only does this mean you should be following the lab safety rules you're about to learn, but it means you should be following the instructions set out by your teaching assistant, instructor, or lab manual if you have one available. Number two, be cautious and plan ahead. Don't rush through your lab activities. As you're working in the lab, think about what could go wrong and pay close attention to what you're doing while you work. For example, are you working with something fragile? How should you move to avoid bumping into your lab partners? Are there any electronics or anything under high pressure? To stay safe in the lab, please wear close-toed shoes, long pants, and shirts that fully cover your torso. Items of clothing like mini skirts, flip-flops, heels, and dresses are not a good idea to wear. These do not provide proper skin coverage, which means that you could be exposed to something hazardous if something goes wrong in the lab. It's also a good idea to tie up any long hair and avoid loose clothing and jewelry if there's the possibility you could get caught in something or catch flame. Just think ahead while you work to protect yourself, others, and your experimental data. Number three, always use the required personal protective equipment or PPE. Your lab manual, teaching assistant, and or instructor will be able to inform you if PPE is required, but also just consider what might make sense to use to protect yourself in the lab. PPE often includes gloves, lab coats, and goggles. Inspect your PPE carefully before each use to make sure it's safe to use. Replace any worn PPE since it can't provide adequate protection. When wearing gloves, make sure you pick a good size for you. The gloves should be form-fitting, not too loose, but also not too tight that they restrict your movement. Number four, make sure any containers you use are properly labeled and any other chemicals are stored in appropriate containers. Although your teaching assistant and or instructor will help with this, please be smart. Don't use chemicals that are not contained or labeled properly as they could be dangerous or misidentified, which can lead to various consequences. Let your teaching assistant and or instructor know if any containers are damaged or if any labels are illegible. These can be reported to the lab coordinator for resolution. Number five, when working with chemicals, read the labels and safety data sheets or SDSs before use. These sheets are available at the front of the lab room in a safety binder and may also be available in your lab manual. If your teaching assistant or instructor calls attention to specific hazards and precautions to take, make sure to listen. Number six, use all materials and equipment as intended. For example, don't use solvents to wash your hands or gasoline to clean equipment. If you're using a piece of equipment like a fume hood, use it as intended, which includes working at a proper distance into the hood and with the sash at a proper height. Another example is that you should be using tubes on vortexes, not your fingers. Set equipment like centrifuges and spectrophotometers to the parameters instructed for you. For any questions on using materials and equipment, ask your teaching assistant and or instructor. Number seven, never eat or drink while handling hazardous materials. Also be careful of using cosmetics or handling contact lenses as this is another way chemicals could get into your body. There are labeled benches and shelves outside the lab spaces to store your food and drink while you work. Number eight, keep yourselves and the work area clean. After handling any hazardous material, even if you wore gloves, wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. Clean your benches off at the end of lab to avoid contamination. Your teaching assistant and or instructor may provide you with a chemical bench cleaner. If not, please still pick up after yourselves to ready the bench space for the next group of students. Part of keeping the space clean involves throwing away your waste. Glass waste, like broken bottles and glass pipettes, should go into the cardboard glass waste container. Since paper towels and gloves are not glass waste, these should not go in the container. Materials contaminated with untreated biological fluids or biohazards like bacteria should be disposed of in the red biohazard bins. If your PPE is contaminated, it should also go in the biohazard bin. However, any uncontaminated gloves, paper towels, or other trash should just go into the normal waste stream. Sharps like needles, razor blades, and scalpel blades should be disposed of into red sharps containers. Note that if you're using something sharp like a needle, please don't recap it. This introduces another point where you could poke or injure yourself. The waste can just go directly into the sharps container. Number nine, keep paths clear. This includes keeping emergency eyewash and shower stations clean, not blocking doorways, and providing open pathways to exits in the event that they need to be used. Number 10, 
Learn about emergency procedures and equipment. Understanding emergency procedures means knowing evacuation procedures, emergency reporting procedures, and how to deal with fires or spills. Make sure your Alert Carolina information is up to date so you can view and respond to any alerts. Know where to locate the nearest fire extinguisher and fire pull alarm in case they are needed. Additionally, know where you will exit the building in the event of a fire. Emergency response also means knowing what to do in the event of a medical emergency. In the event that you are overcome by chemicals, you may need to utilize a safety shower or eye wash station. These are meant to wash off chemicals from your skin or out of your eyes if you are exposed. To use the eye wash, squeeze the handle to activate it and remain under the eye wash with your eyes open for 15 minutes to flush chemicals from the eyes. This may require the assistance of a buddy to keep your eyes open for that period of time. To use the safety shower, pull on the handle and remain under the shower for 15 minutes to wash away chemicals from the skin. This requires you to strip off all of your contaminated clothing. Please don't be modest. Um, a buddy can also assist you by holding up your lab coat or a towel for added privacy. If you're injured, feel faint, or experience other symptoms during the lab, please let your teaching assistant and or instructor know right away. Depending on the severity of the incident, this may require the assistance of 911. Any sort of incidents need to be communicated and documented appropriately. Those were our 10 key concepts regarding safety in our biology laboratories. Remember to follow any additional safety instructions given to you based on the activities in your lab. Please use the contact information provided for any questions and make sure to have fun.